In this video, we are going to do an excursus on the main discoveries that were milestones in our understanding of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis powers almost all life on Earth, and it does it through an elegant reaction, where energy from light is used to oxidize water, and derived electrons are delivered to carbon dioxide to produce reduced carbon compounds in the form of CH2O, that are the basic building blocks of uh, sugars. In this process, oxygen is released, allowing for a complementary reaction called respiration to occur and keep us alive. When looking at this rather simple reaction, it's difficult to imagine that uh, most of it uh, was unknown at the beginning of last century, and uh, the growth of plants remained a mystery for hundreds of years. One of the oldest experiments on plant growth was carried out by Jean-Baptiste von Helmont, a Flemish natural philosopher. His experiment on plant growth uh, was simple but critical. He was trying to understand what is important for the growth of plant. That was still a mystery at that time. What he did was to plant a seedling of a willow in a bathtub and wait five years. After five years of watering, uh, a plant had fully grown, but the weight of the soil didn't change much. So his conclusion was that uh, all the, the nourishment of the plant was derived from uh, water. Although we know nowadays that uh, this is not true, he made the important discovery that uh, water indeed is uh, essential in the photosynthetic equation uh, and he posed the basis uh, for future plant sciences. Hales was uh, an English clergyman and great experimentalist. His book in 1727, Vegetable Statics, uh, contained several experiments condu conducted on plants uh, where he showed the ability of uh, different plant organs to exchange air and humidity with the environment. In photosynthesis, he is remembered uh, for his experiment showing that probably um, leaves are taking some nourishment from the air and, uh, and that also light could be involved in this process. Charles Bonnet uh, was a Swiss, Swiss uh, scientist and noticed that the leaves that are submerged in water produce air bubbles when illuminated. So he was able as well to see uh, some requirements for, uh, for light uh, and that leaves uh, are exchanging uh, gases with uh, the environment. Taking a step further, the English chemist uh, Joseph Priestley observed that plants can purify hair that have been injured by the burning of the candle. He showed that uh, also that plants restore a property that is necessary for animal life and that animals injure air and destroy this property. In 1774, three years later, he was able to obtain this purified air by heating up mercury oxide, so he was able to obtain this air in a purified form. Although he was a brilliant experimentalist, uh, he lacked of strong conclusions from his work uh, that uh, were drawn actually only when uh, he met uh, in France uh, Antoine Lav Lavoisier. In uh, an independent experiment, Lavoisier observed that there was no over in overall increase in weight uh, of, the, of the tin when it was heated in a closed container uh, with air. But uh, uh, when he opened this container, he saw that uh, somehow the, the weight of the air was, uh, was less and the weight of the can increased. So, from, from his experiments and Joseph Priestley's experiment, he understood that uh, uh, air is made of two components. Uh, one is called, he called vital air, oxygen, and is essential for combustion and respiration. And the other is azoth, uh, which means lifeless, uh, and in English became nitrogen. So he was able to see the involvement of uh, oxygen in the process of photosynthesis. Ingenhaus was uh, a Dutch physician and he was the first to describe in good detail the process of photosynthesis. He proposed that CO2 is the source of nourishment for, uh, for plants and he confirmed that oxygen is released in this process. He showed that uh, uh, the plants in Priestley experiment were dependent on the sunlight reaching its green part so overall, Ingenhaus found that light is necessary for air restoration and that only the green parts of, the, of a plant can actually perform photosynthesis. The final contribution to the equation of photosynthesis came from the experiments uh, recognizing that carbohydrates uh, are formed as chemical energy by plants. Julius Robert Meyer was a German scientist and uh, he is uh, one of the founders of modern thermodynamics. Uh, 
Regarding photosynthesis, he understood that light energy is collected and transformed into chemical energy that allows plants to grow. Julius von Sachs, uh, a German botanist, developed a technique to detect starch formation in leaves uh, by staining leaves uh, with a weakly alcoholic solution of iodine. He showed clearly in pictures that starch is produced in plants only in illuminated leaves. Therefore, therefore it was clear at this point uh, that light energy is used by plants uh, to transform CO2, carbon dioxide, in carbohydrates. The requirement for photosynthesis and thus plant grow were eventually understood and the equation of photosynthesis was complete. But what was still a mystery was the way that plants perform photosynthesis. The current scheme of photosynthesis show a series of redox reactions which are started with the supply of uh, light energy to the photosystems and that two photosystems are working in series. All of this knowledge was still obscure at the beginning of uh, the 20th century. The major steps towards a, a mechanistic understanding of photosynthesis were done by Robert Hill and Cornelis van Niel. Hill isolated the chloroplast from the rest of the cell and devised an ingenious method to estimate the oxygen evolved during photosynthesis. He used the blood from a slaughterhouse and monitored the change of color from dark red to bright red when oxygenated. He noticed that uh, uh, the isolated membranes themselves were not able to do efficient photosynthesis. Hill established that it was possible to restore high rates of oxygen evolution to chloroplast suspension if they were supplied with ar an artificial electron acceptor, not necessarily CO2. Van Niel was interested in the bacteria that are able to do photosynthesis and sustain their growth in the absence of oxygen. He observed that this organism used different uh, electron donors other than water, which are in the form of H2X. Hill and Van Niel were able to show the redox nature of photosynthesis reaction and the possibility to separate reduction and uh, oxidation in the photosynthetic equation. Robert Emerson and William Arnold used the flash of, of light to investigate the primary light reactions in photosynthesis. They observed that uh, for every 2,500 chlorophyll molecules, uh, just one molecule of oxygen is formed. This was contradicting the hypothesis that every chlorophyll should produce one molecule of oxygen if excited. This discovery was interpreted as there is a pool of inactive chlorophylls surrounding one active chlorophyll molecule capable of producing, uh, pr producing oxygen. The concept of antenna and photosynthetic unit was there born. Nowadays, uh, we know that there are several pigment binding complexes that serve each reaction center by delivering collected photons energy in the form of excitation energy. It was again Emerson to discover two important phenomena of photosynthetic organisms. He observed that the absorption of photons correlate uh, well with the photosynthesis efficient measured by oxygen evolution. However, when plants are illuminated by far red light, photosynthesis efficiency drops dramatically. In later experiments, Emerson showed what is called the announcement effect, showing that there is an additive uh, effect of red and far red light that when they are supplied together, plants can achieve higher rates of uh, photosynthesis, of oxygen evolution. The interesting results of Emerson were not easily explainable. The work of other scientists, and especially the pioneering work of Louis Duissens, uh, was uh, crucial to explain them. Uh, what he did was to monitor the oxidation state of uh, cytochrome F in the thylakoid membrane in relation to excitation with uh, green and infrared light. He could do it in virtue of the differential absorption properties of the cytochrome when in reduced or in oxidized form. He observed that green light excited specific subset of chlorophylls that reduced the cytochrome, but the far red light uh, acted on another subset of chlorophyll molecules, and the result is the opposite, an oxidation of the cytochrome. He interpreted this brilliantly with a theory involving two photosystems working in series in the photosynthetic chain, one before and one after the cytochrome F. The discoveries so far listed are only a few of the milestones that uh, led to our current understanding of photosynthesis. Nowadays, advances in molecular and structural biology and biochemistry 
are giving us a very detailed picture of the components of the photosynthetic organisms, with deep insights on the interactions, localization and function of proteins, pigments and lipids in the photosynthetic membrane.